What up, guys? It's your boy, Williams Fitness. Uh, breaking news. Uh, William Bonax just posted on his Instagram story uh, what can only be described as a very, very large uh, and long rant about Neil Hill. Now, Neil Hill is uh, William Bonnack's coach. He is also Flex Lewis's coach. He has also attempted to coach other people in the past. Um, I made a video not long ago... Um, Basically pointing out the good relationship between William Bonnack and Neil Hill and obviously proves um, we don't obviously know what's going on in the background. Now, topics I want to touch on on this is some things that obviously William Bonnack has, has come out and said. Um, obviously, the first thing I want to touch on is obviously their relationship has broken down really, really badly. Uh, from what I can gather, it's mainly about money. Now, William has gone on to say that uh, Neil Hill was taking 40% of his winnings and bonuses. 40 fucking percent. Now, bear in mind, right, guys, coaches obviously do a lot of work. Now, William in this rant has obviously kicked off and said, no, he doesn't. He was doing nothing. He was asking for pictures, complaining about the pictures and about the lighting. And he was paying him like three grand a month to cover his rent or something that he goes on to say in the video. Um, now, 40% of anybody's winnings is a lot. Now, bear in mind, that's a lot of pressure on a coach as well because they've obviously got to get that bodybuilder, their their team, to win because obviously if they win, they get more money uh, between them. However, I do think 40% is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Now, maybe when they get to obviously the levels that William Bonnack and Sean Roden, etc. are at, there has to be some sort of threshold and some sort of contractual agreement where they do pay a specific fee, maybe monthly or yearly or seasonally, however you want to put it. And then they do take a small fee if they win. So it's a bonus all round. So if you win the Mr. Olympian, you get half a million dollars. Yeah, maybe your coach should, should get a kickback because they did help you get there. So I, obviously, you know, guys, everybody knows William Bonnack is, is my like fan favorite. I've, I've always loved William um, and he's always been um, the guy that I've, I've always followed uh, and loved. Um, so I can't. I'm obviously taking a lot of it with a pinch of salt. He's obviously very, very pissed off with the whole money issue. So I don't think it's it's too fair on Neil. I don't know Neil, and uh, you know I do speak to William, um, so I'm not just going to jump out there and put put Neil on blast. But I do think forty percent is an absolute joke, especially when Williams um, he hasn't exactly won that many shows so obviously he's not got that much faith in Neil as a trainer um, and another thing I want to touch on is the fact that William did say that Neil does a lot of um, slagging off and what I mean by slagging off is basically just talking shit about Flex Lewis oh Flex hasn't paid me he doesn't do do you know um, and just going on and on about how how he bad mouths uh, Flex Lewis to William and, he, and William obviously goes on to elaborate, well, if you can do that and you can talk shit about your most winning athlete who created your name, and William goes on to say that, he created you, Neil. You didn't create him. In my personal opinion, opinion, it's it's a symbiotic relationship with a coach. Um, obviously, yes, you are doing the work in the gym, but through the guidance of a coach and a trainer, they do your drug protocol, and yes, a lot of drugs. They do your protocol. They do ask for pictures. I do know a lot of professional online coaches. I know, um, and I speak quite frequently to uh, Francis Diet and several other people, and it is that it does have to be a very symbiotic relationship. You can't just say, oh, you're not doing anything for me. Because otherwise, if that's the case, you wouldn't have been paying these fees for years and years and years. Obviously, each year, William probably should have sat down with Neil and said, yeah, come on, what the fuck, 40%. We haven't won X amount of shows. We've competed in 10. We've won two. Do you know what I mean? So he should be like, and Neil should be saying, look, maybe that's on me as well. Neil should have obviously sat down with William and said, let's renew your contract um, or just stuck to monthly fees with a with a bonus clause and obviously reduce the bonus clause until he starts getting him on a winning performance. Now, what I want to touch on with the whole 40% thing is if, if William's contract's 40%, William does go on to say he spoke to other athletes and their deals were 20% and they even said to, to William, yo, wh why the fuck are you still with him? 
Why, why are you still with him then if you're not happy with the 40%? What's Flex Lewis's bonus? Is Flex Lewis giving Neil Hill 40% of those earnings? Now, bear in mind, Flex Lewis has got a lot of deals. He's got his own gym, the Dragon's Lair. You know, he's not short of money. But is that the same deal? Because Flex Lewis is a seven-time Mr. Olympia champion. How much did Neil get paid? I mean, it's none of my business, but if that's the contract he's got with, with William, obviously I've got to touch on this subject. I've got to get this story out there. Uh, it does open a lot of uh, discussion about what actually goes on in the background because I did, like I said, and I'll be humble about this, I did a video just a few days ago about William and how he had a really good relationship with Neil Hill. So foot and mouth moment for me. Clearly, that wasn't the case. So, you know, I'll be humble. I'll sit back and take that on the chin. But, you know, I do agree with William on some aspects of it. I don't on others. I do think every pro bodybuilder should have a coach. I just think you need to find the right coach. Now, William touched on another part of, of this. Um, and I, well, I will call it a rant. It was it started off as like, like a, a public service announcement for its fans. And then he seemed like he just needed to get a lot of shit off his chest. And he did that. So what I want to touch on is William did make a very good point of um, he should be paying that to his training partner, the 40%, not to Neil. Now, with this, how I want to touch on this is, and I'm, I am going to use Sean Roden as an example because um, he's just perfect for this for this, um, for this this mod module I want to discuss so if we look at sean roden sean roden has charles glass as his trainer probably and undoubtedly probably one of the best trainers in the world for bodybuilding then you've got chris aceto arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time what sean has done is he's gone right you're the best coach in the gym you're the best coach outside of the gym when it comes to diet, drug protocol, uh, lighting, where he needs to be working on. And I'm pretty sure Chris, Charles and Sean would be getting together to discuss areas and topics. Now, the beauty of obviously Charles Glass, Charles Glass was a bodybuilder. So he does know a hell of a lot, not just about training, but about posing. So when you see the likes of Sean Roden with Charles Glass and Chris Aceto a few weeks out from a show, they can their, their relationship gels so well that Chris can say, all oh, right, okay, you need to be tweaking this and tweaking that. And then obviously Charles is there and Charles can go, right, okay, we can do this, this and this in the gym. And then obviously Chris can sit back and go, right, we can do this and this with your diet to, to obviously bring that out or to fill the muscle belly, etc. So I do agree with William in a way that, yes, the person you train with and who motivates you and pushes you in the gym should be getting paid. If it's a friend, and I know William trains a lot with uh, one of his friends. I'm pretty sure he's part of the Warren um, uh, group as a, an athlete. I'm pretty sure. I'm not too sure of the guy's name. Seems like a cool dude. He's always in a lot of um, William's Instagram stories. But again, if you've got an online coach and they are not motivating you enough, you've, you're losing a relationship with them, I don't think you can throw that back at them after the fact. It's a case of you need to sit down with that coach, air these thoughts and opinions out, renew contracts, build bridges, whatever it's got to be, or just go your separate way. Now, William is a hard worker, he's a hard grafter, and he's come a long way. Neil Hill does have a good knowledge and a good foundation and a good footing in the industry. I think this is just highlighting a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that we're, that none of us are really aware of. Um, I have included uh, some clips, obviously, of the rant in this video. So, obviously, a lot of it's been chopped up to put the, the key moments in. I just wanted to get the story out there because... It seems at the minute this year is just going to shit for bodybuilding. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I had a good and bad reaction to the Dexter Jackson video. I think people just saw the title and thought I was hating on him and I wasn't. Um, everybody's saying, oh, he's going to be top five because he isn't there, he isn't there, he isn't there. And that wasn't my point. My point is, if Phil was there, if Sean was there, if Big Rammy was there... No, Dexter Jackson would not be in the top five. And probably take Big Rami out of the situation because 
I'm not sure he can make a top five just yet. Obviously, he's not coming back till next year, and that's what I'm waiting on for him. So, comment below, guys. Do you think William's just getting it off his chest? Do you think this raises a huge point in bodybuilding? Do you think a lot of these athletes are not communicating with each other, even if they are under the same coach? Another thing I want to touch on is, obviously, in the video... Um, William gives us a tour of his, his house, his flat. I'm not sure what kind of style of house it is. And it was quite humbling to see. The guy has earned half a million in the last five years. Um, it was very humbling um, with respect. He pointed out that obviously uh, his living conditions compared to Neil Hill, who he's paying $3,000 a month for, is living in essential luxury compared to obviously William. Now, I don't know if Neil's got wife, kids, whatever. I know William's got a family. I know he's got a family. I know he's got kids. I know he's got people depending on him financially. So 40%, absolute piss take. Um, I, I feel for William. I do feel for William. I think it's built up and built up over a long time. Um, and I think Neil has obviously been riding a lot on Flex and William and profiting now again it's really hard to to take a side but when you can see how sincere William's been and how forward he's been showing where he lives etc it's hard not to sympathize with him it really isn't it's it's hard to to not see like shit dude I mean we know how much you just won from this show we know how much and then you realize and you sit back when people have started taking their bit away from you that you you know you oh you coach oh you um, you, you, fuck it, whoever your gym fees, your travel expenses, hotel expenses, food expenditure. What are they actually left with? It's it. My mind is boggled by this, and it's it's. I just love the fact that Williams brought this to light. Um, it's probably probably not been the best way how he's approached it, but he's been humble in how he's done it. It's just fucking crazy, absolutely crazy, I, and and. 40% is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous, surely they should have, he should have stipulated in the contract, right, if you get to this place, we'll do this amount, if I get you to this place, we'll do this amount, because again, it's symbiotic, if William's doing the graft, and he's getting the conditioning, and he's getting a certain specific place with a certain payout, they should say, right, Neil should be like, right, if you get third place, it's less, second place, it's slightly more, first place, it's a bit more, there should be a specific percentage on his placing and how much profit that William has made. Because, well, not even profit, essentially that's his salary. You know, these supplement companies aren't paying these guys silly amounts of money. Don't think for one second that any bodybuilder is getting ridiculous amounts of money from a supplement company being sponsored by them. They really aren't. Unless they own the company and it's doing well, they're not making that much money from these supplements. Or a lot of these seminars and these tours. That's why they have to say when Phil comes to the UK, he has to make it worthwhile. He has to go to, you know, 10, 15 different gyms, do 10, 15 different talks, you know, shop openings, gym openings, etc. Because it has to be worthwhile. They're only getting a few grand at each place. They're not making thousands upon thousands. They're bodybuilders. They're not pro football players. They're just bodybuilders. Our sport isn't quite there yet. So, honestly, comment, guys. What do you think? This is fucking crazy. Drop a comment. 